Now, I think we can all agree that the world of Subnautica is a pretty dangerous place. Around every corner there is just something waiting to ambush you when you least expect it, killing you and your sea moth in the process. Today we will be talking about a predator just like that, and one that is in fact the master of waiting to strike an ambush, hiding until the last possible moment before attempting to catch you with its claws. We will be talking about the crab snake. I will tell you everything we know about these creatures, where in the world of Subnautica you can find them, what they look like, what they behave like, and finally, maybe a few interesting points of trivia or some theories that we can go into just to end the video off. Now, as with all the other lore videos, there is a chance of this containing spoilers to the main story of Subnautica, so if you haven't had the chance to experience it yourself and you don't want to have it spoiled, I strongly recommend clicking off the video and coming back later. Now, with that out of the way, craft that improved O2 tank, get ready to explore some caves, and let's go. Now, first of all, the crab snake is a creature that is somewhat rare in the world of Subnautica, given that you can only find it in one specific biome, that being the Jelly Shroom Cave, which has mostly vertical cave-like entrances around certain parts of the safe shallows, and which contain large populations of jelly shrooms that these creatures have adapted to and started to inhabit. Now looking at them from the outside, from the name Crab Snake themselves, you can probably figure out mostly what they look like. They have an eel-like body with predominantly pink slash red top and a more white bottom side, with two long translucent fins which run all the way down from its neck to its tail. The top of their body furthermore contains several red slash brown stripes which dotted in intricate patterns along with a bunch of smaller growths which almost appear to be a different life form, kind of how you have other plants growing on the back of reef backs. However, these could also just be extensions of its inner skeleton. And on their face you can see a pair of large fangs, two claws, one on each side with a black tip, and seemingly no discernible eyes, though some people have come to speculate that these grey spots on the sides of their head could potentially give them visual information. Now, In terms of their behavior as already mentioned, they make their homes out of the jelly shrooms located all around their caves where they will mostly wait in an upright position until the player gets too close or a piece of fauna enters their area, at which point they will emerge from their mushroom, attempting to grab the player or whatever they're attacking in a surprise attack somewhat similar to the Reaper Leviathan, dealing 35 damage to the player in one hit before either retreating back to their mushroom or doing a small circle around the player and coming back in for another bite. Claws will be plunged into its prey while the inner jaw is used to tear pieces off and feed on whatever is left. If you observe them from a distance, it is also possible to sometimes see them pop out, swim a few laps around as if though observing and patrolling their area before retreating back into their homes. Now I'm sure quite a few players were distracted from looking at cool mushrooms by hearing this sound. But even if you do, that does not have to be the end of it, as despite their somewhat terrifying looks, these things are nowhere near as dangerous as some of the other leviathans that we've discussed in previous videos. Now even though you can't really sneak up on them considering they're active both during the day and during the night, if you happen to be in your sea moth, the damage they will deal to you is only very minor, in the prawn suit it will be barely noticeable and if you happen to be in your cyclops you will be ignored completely. Well, almost, because if you attempt to approach a mushroom that one of these things is hiding in, in one of your larger submersibles, it can sometimes hiss at you before retreating back into its home. If however you decide to go for offense instead of defense, using something like the stasis rifle with a blade or your prawn suit can get you pretty quick results considering this thing's not so impressive 300 point health pool. And finally, if you are looking to make yourself a pet crab snake, their eggs can be found inside of the jelly shrooms, however, you have to wait until the inhabitant has left if you want to collect them. Now that is essentially all of the information that were outright given about these creatures, however there are a few more interesting points of trivia and a few theories that we can potentially go into just to end the video off. 
Now, as already mentioned, these things have no really visible eyes, which is why some players have theorized that those gray spots already outlined before could serve as more primitive versions of eyes that perhaps only detect light or movement. However, some people have also thought that it is entirely possible that these things track their prey based on vibrations in water, kind of how some other real-life fish do. Now, some people have also thought that a crab snake may have perhaps been responsible for the demise of the Jelly Shroom Cave base built by the Degassi crew. However, this is fairly unlikely as it never comes up in any of their voice logs, simply referring to the windows as leaky rather than being cracked by a giant worm-like creature, which to me sounds like something they would most likely mention in their journals if it actually happened. If you attempt to spawn a crab snake far away from any jelly shrooms, it will still attempt to hide in whatever place it spawned, assuming that it spawned inside of a jelly shroom as it is supposed to. And finally, it is possible that the crab snake might be inspired by a real-life bobbit worm, which is a type of worm that buries itself in sand, waits for prey, and then pops out, attacks it, and returns back into its home. But anyways, with that, that was all of the information I was able to gather on the crab snake. This was a heavily requested video, so I hope you guys enjoyed it and maybe learned something new and cool about the very interesting world of Subnautica. If you liked the video, maybe consider leaving a like, commenting, or subscribing. All of those would be very much appreciated. And if there are other facts or theories or requests for additional lore videos that you would like to tell me, make sure to leave those down in the comments below. I would like to read all of them or message me directly on Discord for what other type of creature you would like me to cover next. With that, I want to wish you all a bit of rest off today, and I'll see you in whatever next video I make. Bye bye.